I want to talk about the parallelogram law, which is basically a very useful tool that we can use to find the resultant force of two forces without having to do math. So you can find this in a very geometrical way. You can draw it out and measure it using physical measuring tools like a ruler and a protractor. So this is great if you don't want to do a lot of math. Um, and you could obviously, you know, add two vectors together using trigonometry and stuff like that. But the parallelogram law is an alternative to that when you haven't really learned yet how to find the separate components of a vector. So it's perfect for IGCSE students, for instance. Now, the parallelogram law is a law that allows us to add vectors together in a geometrical way, not a mathematical way. For the parallelogram law to work, we take the two vectors. So you take, you know, let's say we have P and Q. So we have these two vectors um, and we draw them as if they're starting from the same point O. So you kind of merge them together so that they start from this origin. And then we draw a parallelogram with these two guys. And after you draw the parallelogram, you can find their resultant by measuring the diagonal of that parallelogram. Now, let's go a lot more into depth about this process in general. So, first of all, I think it's worth asking what a parallelogram is. This is a parallelogram, and it is essentially a shape that has parallel lines. It's literally in the name, parallelogram. Now, the most distinctive function, um, the most distinctive characteristic of a parallelogram is the fact that the opposite sides are actually parallel to each other. So AB is parallel to DC. AD is parallel to BC over here. So both pairs, right, these two and these two are both parallel to each other. Um, Another thing is that the opposite angles are identical. So the angle at A is the equal angle as the angle at C. And so for the angle at B and D. So these two, the opposite ones, are identical. Thirdly, they have two diagonals and they bisect each other. Um, the word bisect means that they cut through each other directly in the middle point of each other. Um, another thing to note is that the opposite sides, remember, they're parallel to each other. Well, they're actually also equal to each other in length. So the alternative to a parallelogram is a shape called a trapezium, which looks like this. And a trapezium is different because only one pair is parallel to each other. Opposite angles are not identical. And in addition to that, um, the length of these this parallel pair is also not the same. So that's why a parallelogram is different from a trapezium. Both sides are parallel and both sides are equal to each other in length. Opposite angles are identical and they have two diagonals and they bisect each other. So how do you use the parallelogram law to find the resultant force? Um, well, now we're going to try to use what we know about parallelograms to find the resultant force of two forces that act you know, with each other at an angle. So since forces are vectors, remember they have a direction and a magnitude, we can find the resultant force of the two forces by drawing a parallelogram with them. So let's say there's a force of 5 newtons and 3 newtons. They're acting at 38 degrees to each other. Okay, so right now we have a sort of situation where there's a 5 newton force and there's like another guy who's pushing 3 newtons and these two forces are 38 degrees apart. How should we draw this out? Well, we need to make sure that the 5 to 3 ratio, so remember this is bigger than this, so that sort of ratio has to be represented well when we draw out our parallelogram in our diagram. So one thing that we used to do this is we let 1 cm on our drawing represent 1 newton. We draw a key or some sort of scale um, to make sure that the 5 to 3 stays in proportion and this ratio is represented because we have a linear um, key or a scale. You also need a protractor so you can just manually measure the 38 degrees between the two lines. So let's get started. Let's say we have a 5 newton force as we had in our question and a 3 newton force and they're acting at an angle of 38 degrees to each other. Now, the first step you need to take is to write down the scale. 
So the scale that we want to use over here is that one newton, let's represent one newton, is one centimeter on paper. So here I'm going to put my scale and I'm going to write this down, which you should do in any exam that you're, you know, in which you're asked to use the parallelogram law. So the reason why I used one newton as one centimeter is because five newtons would be five centimeters in this case, and five centimeters is a very nice length to draw on an exam paper. If this was 5,000 newtons, it would be absurd to use this scale because you would need to draw a 5,000 centimeter line on your exam paper, which you do not want to do. So if you had something like this, I would suggest maybe you need a scale like one newton is 0 0.01 millimeter so that you can make it a smaller line that it fits on your paper. In any case, the second step after you've written down the scale would be to draw your two lines. So you can do this very easily. Once you have the scale, you know that the 5 newton is going to be represented by a 5 centimeter line. So you can use your ruler and draw a 5 centimeter line. And I'm going to label it 5 newtons. You can take your protractor and measure. So I'm going to draw a protractor right here just to show you how it might look like. So you take your protractor, you put it there, and you measure 38 degrees. So you measure 38 degrees, and then you draw your 3 Newton line, which is going to be 3 centimeter according to our scale. So I will draw that like so, and we will have our 3 Newton line. So right now we have two lines that is according to the scale, and we know that the angle between them is correct because we have used our protractor. Now the third step is to complete your parallelogram. So to complete your parallelogram, we want to look back at the information we learned about a parallelogram in the previous slides. So we learned that in a parallelogram, the opposite sides are equal in length and they're also parallel from each other. So I'm going to draw um, a, an opposite side to the 5 Newton line. Because they have to be equal in length, my line is going to be 5 centimeters too. And it's going to be parallel to the 5 Newton line. So I'm drawing a parallel line that is also five centimeters. Ta-da! This guy is also going to get another side that is parallel to the three Newton line, and it's also equal in length, meaning that it's also going to be three centimeters long. And so we have completed our parallelogram. Easy peasy. Our fourth step is to draw our diagonal. To draw the diagonal, you just take this point and you take this point and you join them up and that is the diagonal. It's not a perfect diagonal, but I'm pretty sure you will be able to do it better when you have all of these tools by your side, like your ruler. Anyway, so here's my diagonal. And that is a very, very easy step. The final step that we have right now is to measure the diagonal and to get our final answer. So I can measure this with a ruler. And I can also measure this angle with a protractor that you have by your side. So I measured this using my ruler and I got around 5.8 centimeters um, and this angle was around 10 degrees. Now this could be very, very different because there are anomalies in measuring with a ruler and on top of that I am doing it on a tablet which makes things difficult but when you're doing it in the exam be very precise about it and try to get it as accurate as possible um, it also doesn't hurt to do some double checking using math and the pythagorean theorem and so on and so forth yeah so i made a mistake here it was 8.8 .8 instead of 5.8 at least it seems like to me so because this line is 8.8 .8 centimeters according to my ruler how many newtons is this resultant force? Well, we remember back our scale, which is that one newton equals one centimeter. So 8.8 .8 centimeters would equal 8.8 .8 newtons. So our final answer is that our resultant force is a magnitude of 8.8 .8 newtons and it acts 10 degrees anti-clockwise to five newtons, the five newton force. So you would have to write that down as your final answer. And that is how to do, um, how to find a resultant force using the parallelogram law. There are five simple steps. You have to write down your scale. It has to be an appropriate scale. For instance, if this were a 5,000 Newton force, you would not use this scale. You also need to draw your two lines using your ruler and your protractor according to your scale. 
you have to complete your parallelogram, making sure that the opposite sides are equal in length and also parallel to each other. You have to then draw your diagonal, not difficult, and measure your diagonal. So you can measure the length of this with a ruler, and once you get the length, you can convert it to the newtons using your scale, and you also get the angle that it makes with one of your forces using a protractor, so that you know the direction in which your resultant force acts as well. So that's the guide to how to use the parallelogram law. Thank you for watching.